Valley News Live and Gate City Bank present the Bison Football Show with head coach Chris Kleiman. North Dakota State came out hungry. The Bison scratched and clawed and showed that championship mentality by getting a gritty road win against 5-1 Western Illinois. We welcome to the set head coach Chris Kleiman and congratulations on the victory coach. These road wins, you, you can't take for granted how hard they are to get, can you? Yeah, I, I thought the guys played really physical, played really hard. We talked about playing for 60 minutes and uh, although it wasn't always perfect, our guys continued to believe and uh, it was a great team win. You had a great week of practice, I think, too. You could just tell on the sideline these guys were chomping at the bit to play. Yeah, we were locked in, ready to play, and, and we had a great week of practice. Credit our captains and our leadership uh, on the football team to make sure that the guys were, were focused to play for 60 minutes. And every Valley game is going to be difficult, especially when you get on the road in, in a tough environment, tough travel, all that stuff. Oh, yeah. But there's just no excuses. We needed to come up with results uh, last night, and we sure did. Hey, Western Illinois is a good football team, 5-1, and one, physical. Let's roll the tape on this uh, first half. Had they shown a lot of quarterback run? Uh, they showed it early in this game. Yeah, they had really the week before, and, and we knew that they, we were going to probably see some. And, and McGuire's a good football player. You know, yeah. He can do it with his arm and his legs. Corner blitz. I thought this was a really good defensive call early in the game. Jalen Allison, nice. Yeah, and I don't think we've brought Jalen this year, so it was a great call by Coach Ince and, and great sack there by Jalen. Going into this game, you and I talked about it in the pregame, you thought there were some opportunities in the passing game. Yeah, we had to be able to throw the football to try to soften them up, and, and what a great throw uh, and, and catch by uh, Shep there to get us a big first down. Four plays and you're in the end zone. It's all, it's seven nothing after this touchdown here. Easy game, right? Yeah, we couldn't have scripted it any better. We needed to start fast on defense with a stop and then offense. I think it was four plays, like you said, and, and a big touchdown and give us some early momentum. Well, they're pretty good on offense. Their coaching staff has an offensive pedigree and they put a good drive together. They really did. They did a great job against the blitz here, picking it up and having some crossing routes and they converted some third and mediums that. Uh, we need to try to shore up this is a great play. It was just a back shoulder to Lenore, who's a really good player, and I thought Allison did a tremendous job on him. Yeah, that was a third and seven. This is a third and nine. Now the guys do a good job here to keep him out of the end zone. A absolutely. I thought it was really good calls by Coach Hintz late in the, in the drives when they had some third and longs uh, to make sure we played some coverage and do a good job of holding them to a field goal. And with that, that was a 16-play, 67-yard drive, chewed up the entire first quarter and it's 7-3. to three. Now a little adversity, linebacker sitting in that blind spot here. Yeah, he looked like he was coming off the edge and just dropped in coverage, and, and uh, Easton didn't see him, and they make a big play. Craig Menard gets a big sack again. The defense put in a tough spot. They come up big. Well, you know, you and I always talk, field goals will never beat you, right. and uh, we did a great job on defense. Um, all the guys will, will keep them out of the end zone and hold them to three. You're right. That's another field goal. 7-6, a big win for the defense right there. Another scary play right here. This ball seemed like it was in the air for 10 minutes. You know, they have a really good front four. They're yeah, aggressive. They they're physical. A uh, guy gets his hands up and, and knocks it away. I thought you really gained some momentum in this part of the game. Jackson Coons comes in and gets a great bounce. This is a 54-yard punt inside the 10. Yeah, we always talk about it. That ball bounced at the 30. You, you have to catch those or you never know where it's going to go. And this thing goes all the way inside the 10 and it really flips the field and gives us our momentum back. And you want to hold that field position and you do force a quick three and out. Yeah, really good job of leverage there by Plank and, and uh, Pierre. So got some momentum right now, and here's Dallas Freeman uh, going across the middle. Tough catch. Yeah, and this is a really good first down play. Uh, Dallas Freeman, what a great catch, and, and Dallas needs to continue to be a big part of our offense. Jeff Ilias also made some great catches on this drive. I thought this was a great job by Coach Palasek in keeping our same personnel going into a hurry up. They didn't realize Ilias was in the slot, and we make a big throw and get us inside the 10. Great rhythm on this drive. Easton gets it inside the one here, and you're going to punch this drive in. This is a great drive here. Yeah, it really is. Like you said, we had a 48-yard field, and we needed to capitalize on it. And uh, here King, good blocking up front, and runs in. And that was a fourth and goal, so it did take it to uh, fourth down, but you punch it in. It's 14-6. Another three and out, so the defense playing great. Another drive starts here with a 21-yard run. Yeah, really good blocking up front, and, and King pops it through the hole, and we get a big game. Boy, some of those runs were close to just breaking open, too. Yep. Great crossing throw here. This was a tough throw. Yeah, it's a really tough throw, and great job after the catch for Shep getting another 10 yards. 
You know, Jeff Ilias, this is a great catch in the corner of the end zone. He gets a touchdown out of it. They reviewed it, but it was good. Yeah, we thought we had them on this play into the boundary where we could get Ilias behind that safety in front of the corner. And great throw and catch. There was 45 seconds left on the clock, and they do get themselves in position for a field goal. Yeah, they do a nice job. They had a nice two-minute offense uh, against our coverage, but we wanted to make sure and prevent the big play, and then uh, th these were huge points oh, to boy. keep off the board, keep the momentum on our side, and, and great push. Coach Kane does a great job with our PAT block team, and uh, well, we needed them yesterday. Yeah, boy, going into the locker room, lots of momentum, 21-6, passing yards, just 92 for Western, 141 for the Bison. So you were getting some uh, traction in that passing game. Total yards, 222 to 130. Before we break down the second half on the Gate City Bank hot seat, Jack Plankers. Jack, as a child, who is your favorite cartoon character? I grew up watching Samurai Jack. And there that was go. my favorite cartoon character. Are you named after him? <laughs> That's, uh, I don't know about that one. <laughs> Are you a morning person or a night owl? 100% a morning person. What is your favorite pro team, any sport? Pittsburgh Steelers. Interesting. Actually. Yeah. Visit any place in the world, what would it be? I would like to go to uh, Gettysburg. Oh. I'm a history guy. So. There you go. What is the worst household chore? If I could go the rest of my life without ever doing dishes again, that would be a good, a good I'm life to live. You. What is a weird habit you can't shake? I have tried three or four times to stop chewing my nails, and I can't shake it. <laughs> what impresses you most about the Bison coaching staff? How adaptable they are to their players. They really have, uh, they don't have a set coaching style, but they tail it to each player, which is really good. That's a good one. One thing people don't know about you. I believe in ghosts. How about that? Yeah. Thanks, Jack. Yeah. Well, Coach, 21-6 uh, at half. You had to feel pretty good, but you knew it still could end up being a four-quarter game. They're a good team. Yeah, yeah we knew it was going to be a four-quarter game, and, and we needed to come out and play a physical in the second half, uh, play for 60 minutes. We knew there'd be some adversity. You have to overcome adversity, and, and good teams do that. MJ did a great job on the coin toss in the first half. So you yeah. won the coin toss. He called heads. The Bison won it. So you get the ball to start the second half. You get a little rollout play to Chase Morlock here. You know, Chase lines up at wide receiver and comes in and runs the, the back to the flat. He lined up at tight end. He lined up at fullback, lined up in tailback. He's so versatile, allows us to do so many things. This is where the momentum flipped to Western Illinois. Lance Dunn couldn't get the edge. Then there was a 17-yard punt. Suddenly, they started to feel it a little bit. Yeah, they get good field position on their first possession. Great play action, and, and uh, they caught us in a, in a deep zone and threw it underneath between the linebackers and the safeties. Good play by them. So first and 10 from the 21 now. Quarterback keeper, he takes it all the way to the three. Yeah, they caught us in a blitz here, and uh, quarterback does a nice job of, of getting it inside the five. So six plays after the 17-yard punt, they're in the end zone. It's 21-13. Yeah, not the way you want to start off uh, the second half, uh, not moving the ball offensively and then giving up a, a big drive, and, and now we're in a dogfight. Yeah, and some real adversity here. Third and 21, there's an interception. Yeah, the guy does a good job of jumping in front of uh, RJ and making a big pick. This is a big play in the game, though, because they should have first and goal inside the five, and there's some a penalty of some sort. and. Rather than inside the five, they're back at the 20. Yep, personal foul, then they had a false start, so instead of at the four, they're all the way back there. The D does a great job. Great job keeping the cup we talk a lot about and, and having a short gain and tackling well. Big Nate Tangway, I mean, he busts through there. Yeah, Nate just blows the whole offensive line up and blocks the kick, and what a, another great uh, critical play. Good job by Coach Kane of designing the, uh, the, P, the field goal block there. Gets that big paw up there, and this one almost went for 80 yards. Yeah, it sure as heck could have, and, and Six made a good play, and, and uh, we're close on those. We need to pop one of those. And here, off, off the jet sweep, Easton keeps it a couple of times on this drive. Yeah, they were starting to take away the jet, and, and Easton read it well, and, and ends up getting a couple of really big plays for us, and now we have them a little bit on their heels, and we're moving the football. Yeah, 31 yards on those two run plays by Easton on this drive, and then on the field goal, we're in the fourth quarter right now. A little bobbled snap here. Yeah, just a little bobbled snap. We don't quite get it down. Uh, needed those points because we could have gotten it to a two-score game. Yeah, exactly. And now they, they have a little life again. And, and Lance Lenore, he's a great receiver. He's a great receiver is, is right. And uh, they do a good job of 
in the big play on us. He stepped out of bounds there, though. That they have a fourth and two. They do get it here, but pretty good job by the defense to not let them uh, break one. Yeah, it was a good play. I think it was fourth and two, and they get two and a half. And this sets up the play of the game. Looks like they're marching in for a touchdown, and boom! That, that's as good a play as you're going to see in college football uh, by MJ Stump. And, and if without that play, it's 21-19. They're going for two. That was a big hit. And you had to stop them on uh, fourth and goal on the one twice because there was a penalty, and you get a turnover. They don't get any points. No, what a great stop by the defense. Great job by the D-line up front, and I think Plank came in and hit him at, at, as he leaped, and great play by those guys. Three and out by the offense, but you do get a takeaway here. Jalen Allison's playing at a high level for us, and, and uh, he's getting into that C.J. Smith, Marcus yeah. Williams type mold where we maybe can put him on somebody and, and just forget that guy for the day. Trying to put the game away here. Fourth and one. You're kind of in no man's land. You go for it and get it. Another fourth and one. You don't get this one, though. Yeah, we take about six minutes off the clock. We had a really yep. nice drive. Uh, we had a, a third and one and a fourth and one. We need to be able to convert that so we can finish it off so we shouldn't even have to come out on defense. But in the same respect, uh, you know, a little adversity for the defense. Good job by Dom Davis. And then a smart play by Trey Dempsey. Getting the pick. Don't get stripped. Take a knee. Uh, and in the game. That was really smart to, to take a knee right there. You just don't want to fumble or anything there. Good center field by Trey Dempsey right there. 21-13. That is a gritty win by the Bison against a 5-1 and one team. Hats off to the team for a tough trip and coming out with a victory. That's outstanding. Western Illinois didn't even rush for 100 yards in the game. They did win the time of possession, but still a great job by the defense in tough circumstances many times with field position in that game. Let's hear what the players had to say after the game. Obviously, the, uh, there were times where we were really good on offense and we had explosive plays and uh, continued to, to move the chains and uh, guys played really hard. And, and that's something about our team. Guys are always going to play hard. There's no quitting anybody. And, uh, so that's good to see. You know, we all just really locked in as offense. You know, we knew what we had to do. Uh, we wanted to waste some time off the clock, um, hold the ball as long as we could. We, we would have liked to finish in the end zone, like always. That's our motto, you know, finish in the end zone. Um, but we did the next best thing, you know, run time off the clock and uh, we put our defense in great position. I just noticed, like, today we didn't play tight at all. Like, sometimes, like, last game, it was certain situations where I feel like it was a lot of people, like, just tight, like, tense, like, scared. To make, to make a bad play, like, today I didn't see that. I feel, feel like everybody played loose, ready to go, and just wanted to do their job. So if we continue to do that, I think we'll be good in the long run. Anytime you can get a win in the Valley, uh, it's a great night, and, and obviously do it on the road too. But um, we just got to find a way to put together 60 minutes and, and continue to get first downs and, and keep our defense off the field. Exactly. Great road win. This week's Nodak Mutual Insurance Player of the Game, Nate Tangway. Nate was a beast in this game, constantly facing double teams. He never caved in. I can promise you there are some sore Western Illinois offensive linemen today. Nine tackles, a blocked field goal. Tangway was a man in the trenches. We bend, we bend, but we, don't, we do not break. I mean, heck of a fourth and one stop on that goal line. I mean, that was awesome. Our D-line just pushed and... Everybody in the back end just made up for it, caused a fumble. It was just nice to see because, and I mean, the thing really Easton said uh, last night, he's like, guys, we're playing college football. It's fun. So we really all just relaxed and, you know, just kind of went out there with a good attitude and uh, didn't really have a lot of pressure. It felt nice. Did you sense that from the guys this week that the, they just wanted to play a little looser and, and just play more and not worry so much about everything? Yeah, absolutely. And we practiced that same way. Guys had fun in practice. We were flying around, getting our work done. Uh, but you could tell uh, guys were, were really loose and, and just want to go out and play with their brother. Curious about the blocked field goals. We'll take a look at these. Did you see something in the week uh, in their protection schemes, or was this just a situation guys were making plays? What did you see there? Well, no, K Coach Kane does a great job of designing a scheme and, and trying to maybe find the weakness in, the, in their protection, and, and we thought it was inside. We had a good push, you know, the week before outside and got a block, so uh, we thought this week maybe inside and... Uh, they do, they, and that's the thing, you have to play hard. We talk all the time, every point matters in the Valley. Yeah. So you can't ever give in on a point, whether it's a PAT, whether yeah. it's a field goal, however it may be, you can't give in on a point, and those guys didn't do it, and those were two critical plays. Yeah, they really were. How about Dallas Freeman? He deserves to be talked about on the show here today, he deserves to be highlighted. I think people want to get to know who he is a little bit. Well, he's a sophomore, redshirt sophomore from St. Michael Albertville. Uh, played for Jared Essler, who a former Bison player from Minot, who coaches at St. Michael Albertville, and tell us about him a little bit. 
You know, he's got really good hands. He's another guy that walked onto a program that earned a scholarship. There's a long line of those guys in, in Dallas earned a scholarship right before the season started this year. Um, he's got tremendous hands. He's tough in, in the blocking game. And, uh, you know, he's one of those guys that Easton feels comfortable with and going to. And are guys like him, do they they have to earn it in practice, too? He obviously has practiced well to get opportunities like this. Absolutely, and he's gone against C.J. Smith. He's gone against Jalen Allison. He's gone against some of the best corners. And when you're doing that, you're getting yourself better. And, and yeah. uh, I, I'm really pleased with his progression. And, and as we move forward, he needs to become even more of a part of our offense. That's the lifeblood of a program right there, guys like that that work to get on the field. and. Uh, want to be here and play for the front of the jersey that's outstanding standings now in the conference let's break down things after the dust settled a little bit south dakota state beat youngstown state uh, in brookings so they're four and oh but log jam at the top there the conference is tough every week and northern iowa's getting a little life now they're three and four two and two in the league so Every week's tough, isn't it? It is, and we're talking four games into yeah. it, and, and uh, there's a lot of football left, and, and uh, we kind of survive in advance to the next week, and that's all everybody's going to try to do is just you know, win, go 1-0 and for the week and see where it shakes out at the middle or end of November. How tough is it to have two road games in a row, especially with Western being one of those, the toughest travel trip in the league? Yeah, well, everybody's going to have usually back-to-back -back road games. That That's not the issue. It's the 6 o'clock start. You know, yeah. we're getting back that's home at, at, at 2.45, 3 in the morning, uh, and then trying to do it all over again, and we're going to get back home, you know, one o'clock or so next week. That's the tough thing, but you know, hey, that's what adversity is, and it probably affects the coaches more than it does the players. <laughs> the players are used to being up, but uh, uh, for you and I, Jeremy, this yeah. is a, it's a little getting, shorter morning. <laughs> getting too old for this stuff, coach. We're getting too old for this. That's right. 6 p.m. is tough. Well, we got a great story on Nate Tangway coming up. Uh, he's been such a great player, and off the field, you might surprise you what he's interested in. Stay with us. Welcome back to the show. Nate Tangway was our player of the game this week for stellar physical play in the trenches. His interests away from football may surprise you. Maybe he will sit in this chair one day. Here's Beth Houle with this week's Olaf Anderson Construction feature story. A staple on the defensive line since his redshirt freshman year and a vocal leader for the Bison football team, Nate Tangway demands your attention. The junior defensive tackle has started all 38 games in his career with the Bison, shining under the bright lights with hard work and unwavering focus. But when football one day comes to an end for Tangway, he plans to keep those bright lights shining as a sports broadcaster. Welcome to Bison Information Network News Update. I'm Nathan Tangway. Just kind of came along, and I really, I really like that. You know, it's not like I pushed it all of a sudden, like I really had to push for something. It just kind of came to me, and I really enjoy that about it. Tangway headed to North Dakota State with the intention to study psychology, but after a communications course with a broadcasting professor, Tangway says his plans took a drastic change. He just really got me interested, and I loved everything about it. And I'm like, okay, I can be good at this. I'm comfortable on camera. I got a good voice. I'm not shy at all. So it, was, it just, it really seemed like a really good fit. While it seems the transition from sports to sports broadcasting may be simple, Tangway has learned it's not as easy as it looks. It's really tough going in there and trying to do stuff. So you, I really have to research what to do before a game and if I'm, you know, if it's going to be a play-by-play -play or um, just anything. And but I really think I find it interesting doing it because I love learning about new people and players and uh, seeing what they do. With plenty of playing days still ahead for Tangway, he'll remain the focus of the stories for now but he'll continue to practice and learn for the day it's his turn to tell the story. That's it for the news update. We'll be back this evening at 6 p.m. Reporting for the Bison Football Show, I'm Beth Houle. So basically, my job's in jeopardy. Well, he's got an unbelievable personality. <laughs> I just got to heckle him a little bit about the Incredible Hulk t-shirt. I haven't yeah. seen one of those since the 80s. Yeah, I don't know if that's very newsworthy. <laughs> uh, you, have to, you have to wear the shirt and tie. He's got that, a personality, yeah, though, doesn't he? The tie would be really tight around his neck. <laughs> um, but no, Nate, he can do anything he wants. He has yeah. that kind of personality. Uh, he's an unbelievable leader, uh, a great hard worker, uh, and, and we're excited he's only a junior because uh, I still think the best is yet to come for Nate. Yeah, I do, too. How much do you talk to the guys, too, about what they're doing in classes and uh, and... You know, what they do away from the field. Did you know he was interested in uh, the TV stuff? Yeah, I, I did, but, you know, Nate's one of those guys that I always am asking about his classes and stuff. So, but, uh, <laughs> no, all, all the guys, you always want to know what, what are their yeah. interests and stuff. They have, you know, whether it was Bra with the art last year yeah. and Nate in this story, it's, 
you know, some we have some really characters out there, and it's fun to it's fun to be around those guys. It's fun to watch Nate Tangway play football. Man, he is an animal in the trenches. Another young offensive lineman is turning heads in the Bison program. This week's Peterson Farm Seed future crop of Bison, Carson Schoenig. This past recruiting class has three big prospects on the offensive line. We've already highlighted Dylan Radons, Cordell Volson, but don't sleep on Schoening. An in-state product from Rolla, Schooning had his sights set on Fargo all along. I mean, I grew up watching the Bison, so it was kind of a dream. And once they actually offered me, I called the parents right away, and it was just instantly. So I, just the family atmosphere here, and I just loved it. Coach, it's fun, these in-state kids. Uh, they grew up wanting to be a Bison, and he was one of those kids. Yeah, and that tells you everything you need to know. Uh, came to our camp, did a great job, wanted to be a Bison his whole life. Uh, we offered him a scholarship. He jumped on board right away. Carson has a bright, bright future, and he's a center, and that's great for us to truly de to be able to develop a center from his freshman year on. This class has potential up front, oh. doesn't it? I mean, uh, Volson, Ray Duns, Schooning, I mean, that's three cornerstone guys that are all redshirting. Yeah, absolutely, and we have Ben Hecht as another big guard that's redshirting as well. So, no, we were really pleased with what we have up front on the offensive line with a lot of young players that uh, are going to be thrown into the mix uh, as soon as they, their bodies are ready for it after spending a year or so with Kramer. And even Quinn Allo in this class, uh, you know, offensive lineman in high school a lot, but he'll be a D lineman. Yep. So in the trenches, e even him, there's four or five guys. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, that's the lifeblood of our program yeah. is being able to win up front. And that's something that uh, we're always trying to recruit. We're always trying to develop. And that's where the walk-on program is so critical yeah. for us because, you know, whether it's a guy like Steidel, you know, the, those guys walk on, get an opportunity, Proof, Shats, all those guys. Uh, and uh, for us to be successful, it has to start up front. Well, here we go. It's the Northern Iowa Panthers. We all know what that game means. We'll talk about it. Stay with us. It's our Verizon look ahead. Verizon has been serving North Dakota for over 15 years, and it's the Northern Iowa Panthers, Coach. Always a tough game. Absolutely, and then we have to go to the uh, Uni Dome, and so we'll have to work the noise this week because yeah. it'll be a loud environment. But uh, it's another great challenge for our guys, and uh, we came out of this game healthy, which is really good to come out of the Western Illinois game healthy, and we'll probably get a couple of guys back, so we're excited for the challenge. And it's going to be fun. Uh, the Bison are 6-1. and one. Enjoy that. Statewide TV, the Bison Radio Network, everything will be fired up this week for the big rivalry game at UNI. We'll see you next week, folks.